I passed the OSCP exam in my first attempt in eight hours. And in this video, I wanna share with you how I did it and hopefully some resources that might help you on your own journey. Specifically, I wanna talk about three things. The first thing I wanna share with you is just how the exam went for me. I wanna share with you the things I did right, the things I did wrong, and the things that I think were key to my success. Second, I wanna talk about my note-taking process when it comes to the OSCP or hacking in general. Enumeration and good notes are key, and I wanna walk you through how I take notes every time I'm going through a box. And then finally, I wanna share with you the key learning resources that helped me on this journey. So first, let's talk about the exam. The first thing that I think I did right is I focused on my sleep the night before. Or. Now, I know it's cliche. People say, make sure you get a good night's sleep before the exam, but it's so important. So usually I sleep like six to seven hours a night, which is totally fine for me. Each person needs a different amount of sleep. But before the exam, I slept for 10 hours hours, which is insane for me. I went to bed at like 7 p.m. My exam started at 8 a.m. the next day, woke up with my kids, had breakfast, and gave myself 10 hours of sleep. And here's why. We often underestimate how important our physical well-being is on our emotional and mental health. And when you're going into an exam as, as excruciating and as painful as the OSCP can be, we need everything to our advantage, including our sleep and our diet leading up to the exam. So if you're taking the test, make sure, honestly, you get a good night's sleep before you do it. The second thing that I think was a key to my success is I wasn't nervous at all. I, I was actually excited. I was excited to see, could I slay the fearful OSCP exam that so many people are afraid of, my, myself included? Can I pass it? I was excited. I was excited to see how I was going to do. And I even shared this on Discord as well as on LinkedIn, that when I took the exam the first time, my goal wasn't even a pass. I'm happy I did, but that wasn't my goal. My goal was to remain positive. My goal was to have fun. And my goal was to simply be fully present in the exam. I assumed that even if I failed, if I had fun failing, I'd have a much higher chance of passing my second time if I was truly paying attention. But that's almost fell apart. Five hours into the exam, I just about gave up. And here's why. I want to share with you guys the exam structure because it'll make a lot more sense, but I don't want to share from my own mouth because I don't want to say something wrong. I'm going to share my screen, and this comes directly from Offensive Security's public-facing website, so I'm not sharing anything that is like secret, but here's the exam structure. So it's kind of broken up into two parts. The first part is we have three independent targets, and in total, they equal 60 points. You can see there are two-step targets. Here's what that means. You have three machines, and if you get low uh, privilege on the machine, you get 10 points. If you get administrator access on the machine, you get another 10 points. So each machine is worth a total of 20 points. And then there's an AD set, which considered, consists of two clients and one domain controller. It's worth a total of 40 points. And the big thing on here is no partial of points are awarded. So if you compromise both clients, but you don't take down the domain controller, guess what? You get zero points. Now, leading into the exam, you have the option to get 10 bonus points if you do a bunch of flag exercises in the course. I did not do that. The flag exercises uh, frustrated me and I felt like they were overly time consuming and I wanted to spend my time actually learning and hacking stuff, so I didn't do them. So I was going to the exam, no bonus points. Well, if you do the math, in order to get a passing score, you need 70 points. So even if I hacked all three independent targets, got low privilege and high privilege access on them and ended with 60 points, guess what? I'm going to fail the exam. The only way for someone like me to pass without the bonus points is you have to compromise the Active Directory set. Well, for the first five hours of the exam, I was stuck on the first machine of the Active Directory set, could not figure out a foothold, could not figure out my way in, and thought to myself, what's the point of continuing? Like, even if I go to the independent machines and pass all of them, I'm still going to fail the exam. Why am I wasting my time even doing this? I was struggling hardcore with imposter syndrome. I just became a pen tester, and I was thinking to myself, how am I a pen tester, and I'm going to fail the OSCP with a total of zero points? How is this possibly happening after all the studying I went through? I was having, like, this mental breakdown five hours into the exam. Well, I decided not, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to go to a standalone machine for anything just for fun let's see if i can at least get one machine down and within like 30 to 40 minutes i completely rooted one of the standalone machines and that gave me a boost of motivation that i needed and i went from being frustrated back to a place of having fun took down another standalone machine and thought huh 
I should look at that AD set again. Went back and looked at the AD set with fresh eyes, realized what I was missing, took down the AD set, and got 80 points on the exam. Therefore, a passing score. But let me do kind of the math for you guys. Five hours in, zero points. Three hours later, 80 points. So it took me eight hours to pass the exam, but for the first five hours, I had nothing. All 80 of my points came through the last three hours of my exam, which is crazy, but I just want to encourage you, do not underestimate how frustration and anger can blind you from seeing something that is right in front of you. I truly think the biggest challenge of the OSCP is not the technical side of it. The biggest challenge is your mental state. The biggest cha challenge is remaining positive, remaining calm, and doing your best to have fun. When you get frustrated, when you get angry, you are going to miss stuff and you will fail the exam. And I almost failed the exam as a result. Take breaks, step away from your computer, do something different, do whatever you can to come back to the exam with fresh eyes because there's probably something really obvious that you missed because you are angry. Let me go ahead and jump back to myself. The last thing I want to talk about is reporting. Actually, let me share my screen. I forgot I want to share about this on the screen as well for the report. This is something a lot of people don't talk about. We talk about the technical side of the exam, but there's a reporting aspect of the exam that can be just as difficult if you do not prep accordingly. So I'll just read it for you once again directly from their website. It says, you are required to write a professional report describing your exploitation process for each target. You must document all of your attacks, including all steps commands issued and counsel output in the form of a penetration test report. Your documentation should be thorough enough that your attacks can be replicated step by step by a technically competent reader. Look at this. The documentation requirements are very strict. Failure to provide sufficient documentation will result in reduced or zero points being awarded. This is what that means. You could get 80 points, 90 points, 100 points in the technical part of the exam and still fail because you did not do well on the report. My report ended up being 34 pages long. Now, a lot of people do this magical stuff with the report where they like write it down in Markdown and they use some magical machine to generate it as a PDF. Like I was really old school. Uh, Offensive Security releases a template for anyone to look at. You can look at it right now if you Google it on how to write the report. I just downloaded their template and made it my own. I literally just followed their guidelines and put all my commands in there as well. What I did differently though, is because I was done with the exam, the technical part in eight hours, I still had access to the exam environment. So I copied all my commands into my notes and I re-exploited every single machine using my commands from my notes to make sure I did not miss a step. And as a result, I passed. I got the notification today that I passed the exam. I'm OSCP certified. They approved my report. They approved my points and I am done uh, with the exam. But don't overlook the importance of documentation and good notes, which is the next thing I want to talk about with you. Let me pull up my notes. I want to give you guys a real quick example of how I take notes on every single box that I'm working through, either on the exam or just when I'm hacking in general. I want to use solid state from Hack the Box as an example. I'm, of course, not going to share with you any of my OSCP specific stuff uh, due to copyright stuff, but I can walk through some of it using Hack the Box as an example. So here's what I do. I get to a machine and I run two nmap commands. I know some people use auto recon and other auto enumeration scripts, totally fine. I just prefer nmap because I'm used to it and I, I like the manual aspect of it. So the first command I run is this, nmap dash p dash, that means scan all the ports, dash t5 means thread five, it just means do it quickly. It's gonna be noisy, so you wouldn't do this like in a red team engagement because a blue team would see you right away, but dash p dash dash t5, and then you plug the IP in there and then dash V for verbose because I'm, I'm impatient and I like to see MMAP working. What that first command is gonna do is tell you all the ports that are open. It's not gonna tell you what's running on the ports, not gonna give you any service information, but it will tell you very quickly, here are the list of ports that are running. So let's say for example, it tells us port 22, 25 and AD are running. I then run a second command. I do MMAP dash P and then 22, 25 and 80 to specify the ports I wanted to scan dash capital A for an aggressive scan. It means throw all the enumeration scripts at it. Let's get service information. Let's get everything we can. Plug in the IP, dash V for verbose. And that doesn't take long because we're specifying the specific ports. Or if you do that on all ports, it takes a much longer time. And then I take the output from that command, go to my OneNote here, and you can see OneNote can collapse down into sub documents. So I always name the machine here. I have 
the platform I'm working on. Often I add the IP there now as well, so I can quickly glance down at the IP, but I copy and paste the output of that command here, and that's what you're seeing here. And then I just add spaces between the services just so it's easier to look at, but I'm still not done. I then take every single service, so SSH for example, and I create its own subpage for each service specifying the port. So here's SSH on port 22, copy and paste the inmap command there, and then any enumeration I do on that service while I'm working on the box, I copy to that specific aspect of my OneNote so I can quickly click each service and see what's going on. So for example, on SSH, I can see this. I had to use the exploit mentioned in the RSIP to catch the shell when SSH is mini. Okay, so I'm like, okay, I need RSIP. I click down there and here are my specific steps I use to exploit this machine and to get SSH access. You should be doing this from the beginning. You can see, I mean, you can see all my OneNote, all the notes I take. I take notes on literally everything. And if you're not taking good enough notes that you can go back to a box three months later and root the box without much context besides your own notes, you are not taking good enough notes. Start taking good notes now. So that when it comes to the OSCP or when it comes to the PMPT or when it comes to being a real penetration tester, you don't have to learn how to take notes. It's built into you. It is a natural habit. You are jotting things down. You are copying and pasting command output as you are working through it and makes it much easier to replicate. And you will thank yourself when you take the exam and you don't have to learn how to take notes because you're already taking good notes. This is how I did it for the exam. This is how I did enumeration for the exam on every box. And guess what? I didn't miss any ports. I didn't miss any services. And of course I passed the exam. So here is my enumeration hack for the OSCP. Do this one first, figure out what ports are running. Do this second, targeting the specific ports. And it has not failed me yet on any box that I've done, including every machine on the OSCP and uh, their labs and proving grounds practice as well. Finally, let's talk about resources. Let me Go back to my big face again, and I want to share with you guys seven resources. I'm going to pull them up because I jotted them down. Seven resources I recommend that were key for me passing the OSCP. Actually, let's make that eight resources. I'm going to change it up a little bit live because the first resource I want to tell you about is Discord. Uh, way back, well, not honestly way back, me and my friend Nate, who was also OSCP certified, we started meeting a little over a year ago each week to encourage one another as we were both working towards the OSCP. Well, that one-on-one -on -one meeting became the Work Smarter Discord. We are approaching a thousand members and we still host weekly meetings uh, goal meetings. And that was how he and I got the OSCP. Other people speaking into us, encouraging us and working our way through this common goal together. I will drop a link to the discord in the description below. Everything's free. Come join us. We'd love to meet you in discord. So that that's number one. That's the number one resource that allowed me to pass the OSCP. After that would be TCM security and all their resources online, specifically their kind of flagship course on being an ethical hacker. I also did their courses on Linux Privesk, Windows Privesk, and also malware analysis. Malware analysis didn't really have any bearing on the OSCP exam, but it was still a fun course to do. Before I took those courses by TCM security, I was always confused. I was jumping from one module to another module. None of the pieces stuck together, but when I completed that course by TCM security, everything started to make sense. And that's really what set me on this path to being able to get the OSCP. So I cannot thank TCM Security enough for their excellent resources they've released. Next is Try Hack Me, uh, specifically the AD rooms created by my friend Amoeba Man, who's also been a mentor of mine uh, on this journey and through this process. He created almost all the networks on Active Directory in Try Hack Me. And his networks cover more than what you need to know to pass the OSCP exam. Check them out. Try Hack Me is super affordable, well worth your time, well worth your money. The next resource I want to share with you is Hack the Box Academy. Now, that's different than the regular uh, Hack the Box platform. Hack the Box Academy is much more like Try Hack Me, where it's guided challenges and more about teaching you instead of just giving you a box and saying, hey, go ahead and root this. Uh, the courses that were really helpful for me in Hack the Box Academy were AD Attacks and Enumeration. Honestly, probably one of the best, if not the best AD course that I've done. It was also really well done. It culminates in two full AD networks that you get to pen test and, and practice on. The other two that I did was Linux Privesk, 
and Windows Privesk. Once again, super applicable to the exam. I took notes on every single step that I did as I was going through it, so I made sure I slowed down and learned the material. The next resource I would recommend is Proving Grounds Practice. This is a lab environment hosted by Offensive Security themselves. You can get it right now. You do not have to sign up for the OSCP. You can sign up for just Proving Grounds Practice. I believe it's $20 a month. I just bought it for one month leading up to my exam. And what I enjoy about Proving Grounds Practice is a lot of the machines are created by Offensive Security staff and they are very close to the machines you will encounter on the OSCP. And they even have a few retired OSCP machines in Proving Grounds practice, so you can kind of gauge whether or not you're ready. I took TJ Knoll's list. He has a list of machines from Proving Grounds practice that are like the OSCP, and I began working my way through those machines. I think I made it through 20 or 30 of those machines leading up to my exam, and they were really well done and really helpful. So shout out to Offensive Security for that. The next part is just the general hack the box platform. Uh, the one that most of us have heard of with all the different machines. Once again, I just took TJ Knoll's list on OSCP like machines and hack the box and worked my way through those. You can see some of those here. If you look at the list, many of these are those OSCP like machines that I've been working on. Oh, there it is, OSCP boxes. So everything below that are OSCP boxes from hack the box. I use that for a lot of my practice. And then uh, PWK Labs, when you purchase the OSCP, you get access to a lab environment as part of the course. Some people like it. I didn't personally, but to each their own. I only did about 10 machines in their lab environment because I got frustrated with how things were set up and the shared infrastructure of the lab environment uh, just did not work for me. So I did 10 of the machines and then kind of quit on the labs. And then finally, the last resource is the Pen 200 course. I put this one last for a reason. I just didn't find it very helpful. I shared before I didn't do the flag exercises. I did not get the 10 bonus points because it was just way more time consuming to get it. And I didn't care that much about the 10 bonus points. I wanted to pass on the merit of passing and did not want to spend my time doing all the flag exercises. I will say there were some really good things in the course and in the PDF that I did not know about. And although I did not do the flag exercises, there's labs and instruction in the course itself. I did all of those and I definitely did learn stuff through them. I just was disappointed in the amount that it cost for the course. I felt like TCM Security, Hack the Box Academy, and Try Hack Me do a much better job of teaching the material for like a fraction of the cost of what OSCP charges. Ha! Huh. Overall, guys, I would recommend the OSCP, I think. I've, I know I've gone back and forth even publicly when I talk about the OSCP. I was frustrated, still I'm frustrated with some of the training they offer, but the exam itself was top notch. I thought the machines on the exam, can't share much about them. All I'll say is everything was really well done. It was a very smooth process for me. The proctoring was really easy to do. It was really easy to take breaks. It was a really smooth and professional process. So thank you Offensive Security for, for putting that on. I am really happy I passed it. I'm really happy to keep moving, keep learning, keep growing in my career, keep growing as a person, keep growing in my leadership. And guys, this is just the beginning. I will continue to make videos, teaching stuff, uh, sharing my journey as a penetration tester, and I will continue to be live on the Hack Smarter Twitch channel, and we will keep hacking stuff. I'll still hack, hack the box, I'll still hack, try hack me. My goal is to keep learning, not to stop here. This is the beginning of the journey, but guys, thank you. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. Thank you for watching this video, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya.